I want to welcome everyone to our beginner training for SHS uh, 1.3. Um, today, I'm going to focus on common mistakes that I see in the one-on-one -on -one trainings that I do. Maggie from Ireland is here helping us field the questions, helping me field the questions today. Um, I just wanna say one more thing about the one-on-one -on -one training. It is free. Uh, you can write to me, especially if, you're, if you are in the USA or Canada, lucy at synergyhomeopathic.com. Uh, you can see the email right here. And you know, if you're needing one-on-one -on -one at one-on-one -on -one session, that, that's something we can set up for you. Now, if you live outside the US and Canada, I have done Zoom sessions, but I encourage you to reach out to your sales representative in your country um, because very, very frequently you can get a training from them as well. All right, um, so I am going to just jump right into the session unless there are any questions to start. I'll open up my SHS program here. Okay, so one of the things I've noticed um, pretty frequently in the one-on-one -on -one sessions is that in the reference library, let's go down to that. Right now we're in repertory module. Let's pop down to the reference library. And I've noticed that people get confused in here and it is complex because you come into the reference library and you're looking at, always looking at the remedies as the default. And so sometimes people wonder where their books are. Um, you simply have to come over here and take books to see the list of books. So, you know, it depends on what you are looking for as to which you would choose. Let's say that you want to, for instance, explore the remedy plumbum. So you would come into remedies then. Um, this is what I would do, come into remedies type the remedy in the type to search window under where remedies is ticked. And, you know, you can then come down to Plumbum, click on it. And the first book in your library that has information about remedy um, comes up here on the right side, but every other book that has information is down below. And, you know, maybe you don't have a particular book in mind, you just want to look at that remedy. Maybe once you open the remedy, you see, see a book you want to jump to, then you use your down arrow to go to it and hit enter, and then you're on another book. But let's say um, you want to look, compare two remedies. Let's say you wanna compare plumbum with conium, for instance. Um, then I would recommend that you come over to books uh, and especially if you want to look at these two remedies in a specific book, then I would recommend you tick books. And I'm going to go look at both of those remedies in the reliable reversed. So I'm gonna find that book, I'm gonna open it. I don't wanna click on the name of the book because that would put this first remedy over on the right side. So in order to open the book, I click on the plus sign next to it. And then all the remedies that are contained in that book drop down below it. And to get into the remedies, because you need to be in the remedies, see how the highlighting is now focused on the first remedy here. I, that's because I used my down arrow. The highlighting was on the book name. And then I used my down arrow on the keyboard to get into the remedy names. And then I'm just going to go type to the first one, C-O-N. Once I find that first remedy, I'm gonna click okay. All right, and so I've got that remedy up. Now I'm gonna type for the other one, Plumbum, P-L-U. All right, and of course it comes in on something that comes up the alphabet list. Um, oh, actually, okay, here's this one. Now I don't wanna click it because what I want to do is compare these two remedies side by side. And if I were to click on the name of Plumbum, it would actually replace conium on the right side. What I wanna do is right click, which on a Mac is holding down the control key as you click and get this message. And then I'm gonna to click to open Plumbum in another tab. So you see I have two tabs from the same book and I can go back and forth between them. I can also, let's open this window up. I can also, 
compare them side by side. I'm looking at plumb bum, so I'm going to select conium to bring it forward as a side by side view. All right. And so I, I just wanted to review that because um, a lot of people I find in the one on one training sessions get confused about how research their materia medica, whether it's coming at it from a book perspective or a remedy perspective. That's the first one that I wanted to talk about today. Any questions, Maggie? Uh, no, Lucy, not at the moment. Okay. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about was people get a little bit confused sometimes when you are um, global search is one of the best features of the program. And we all know that the global search bar is here at the top. Um, and some people think you need to be in global search in order to use the bar up here at the top, but you don't. Uh, we can go right back to where we were in reference library and we can um, just use the, use the global search window here. Now, another, another thing I wanted to point out is the filtering in global search. So, all these icons to the right of the global search window are related to the global search window. And you'll see these icons pop up in any of the modules. Um, like here you have some icons in the reference library. Uh, you, you, you have to know where you are and apply those icons to where you are. So these icons relate to global search window. I'm gonna click on the filtering for global search window. And here's another place where people get sometimes confused. When you're filtering in global search, um, and this is the only time that this applies, you have to be thinking about, do I wanna be filtering for repertories, for rubrics? Am I looking for rubrics for this filter or am I looking at my Materia Medica? And so you have to make that choice, repertories versus reference library. Um, and so let's say for instance that we we want to be looking for a rubric and we want to filter for a kingdom. Let's say we're filter for the gold series. All right, so I just search that, find it, I apply it. Now remember, it's only gonna be applied to my rubrics in my repertories. Um, and then we look for a word here. Let's say we want to find hernia information in the gold series. So I type the word, I'm gonna hit search. And now you can see in the repertories, the repertory tab always comes up first in global search when you have both of these selected at the top here. And um, so hernia, uh, it, you can see that the remedies listed here in each of these rubrics uh, are from the gold series, no matter which book you're in because we filtered that way. But when you pop over to reference library tab, you can see that it's just every remedy, okay? And that's because it only applied to the repertory tab. You can do it the opposite way. You can come in here, um, take that filter off, open the filter again, reference library, kingdom, gold series. So you can definitely filter for both, but you have to do them one at a time this and now we're going to run that and the repertory result comes in and here you see that uh, you see all the you know you see more remedies that are, that are more remedies that are that are in the gold series um, but when you hop over to reference library you're only seeing gold series remedies so hopefully that's clear Yes, Lucy, thanks. Okay. Another thing is um, sometimes people um, have to close windows to get to the next module. You actually don't have to. If you want to, you can. Um, you can certainly close windows as you go, but you can also uh, just open a window on top of a window. So you see now I'm in Kingdom Graph. And now I'm in management, Kingdom Graph is behind it, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go back to reference library where I was, great. Now I'm gonna go back to my repertory module, 
pop back down to global search. And you can see, um, you know, the windows pile on top of each other, but it doesn't hurt the program for that many windows to be open. Um, you can fix out of them if you want to, but you can just keep bouncing around the program um, however you want to. Now there's a keyboard shortcut. You don't have to aim for the X's, which um, in a Mac computer is on the left side. On a Windows computer, your X to get out of a window will be on the right side. Uh, you have a keyboard shortcut, which can close windows. Command W, Command W. You see it got me, it's, it's closing windows. So again, you don't have to necessarily aim and click. You can go Command W and close windows one at a time. Lucy, can you show where those um, shortcuts are? Of course, yeah. Well, we have a lot of nice keyboard shortcuts. And I almost, the reason I didn't show you where they are actually is because there's a little bit of a um, typo in our keyboard shortcuts. It says here, Command W closes SHS, it doesn't. Command Q closes SHS, Command W closes the window. So I've pointed this out to development. It's just a small little typo that they need to correct. But you can see here, Command W, let's go here to close window and we need to put this, you know, we need to switch those out. Q would close, you know, it makes sense. It's common sense. Command Q closes the whole program. Command W just closes a window. So use, uh, until we get that fixed, just use the common sense there. Another thing, um, Lucy, is, yes, questions. You cut across you. No, um, I was just going to say sometimes customers have difficulty in resizing the window, or maybe the window has gone off the screen. And if they zoom in and out, they can get more. Oh, yes, good point, Maggie. So, um, with 1.3 1 series, the window situation is so much better than it used to be. But even here, sometimes you know, you can get a window that's too out of control. You can do a lot of things to resize your window. You can click, hold, and drag up at the top, the blue bar, um, you know, so you can drag it. You can, you can see how my mouse changes to that two arrows going in several directions. And so you can bring it in like this. You can also bring it up. You see the um, diagonal arrow at the bottom. So that I'm gonna bring it up and out, you know, so you can position your windows to your preference. And then once you position a window, um, it stays there for you. It stays there for you. Now, if you have if you have zoomed in, let's say you've zoomed in and you know, I'm gonna try to make it so parts of my program are off the screen. And actually it's not not happening. But for some people I've noticed that you know parts of the program go off screen. And they're like, well, how do I get, to, how do I get to the X? If, especially if you're on a Windows computer and your X is over there on the right. Um, and you can always just come in here and reset your zoom. If that's not working, you can also zoom out and make it even smaller so that you can see all of that window. And then you grab and resize. So that's um, that's a good thing to know about how to resize the windows and move them all around. And like when you open a chapter, um, a lot of, you see how it's just kind of there. I, I sometimes like to position, you know, my chapter window so that I can see my book list in its entirety, you know? So I might do something like this. And now every time I open a new chapter, let's go to a different one. It's in the same place. You can see it hasn't, it's not shifting because the program's remembering that I wanted it right there. Okay. Um, um, another thing that I wanna reiterate, this is something I've talked about before, but it's important, is the use of synonyms up here in the global search window. So it's just so helpful to find rubrics. So let's say that you're, person has talked about sleepwalking. They're, they're having an issue with sleepwalking. So I'm gonna type sleepwalk and I'm going to activate that because that's all I'm thinking about in the moment. 
Um, and you can see the result is somewhat small over here. It's only in for, you know, for um, repertories. Haven't looked at the references yet, but we're in, we've got it in four repertories. Let's look at the references and nothing there. So let's go, let's go over here. Oh, you know what? Let me take off this, uh, let me take off that filter. I'm gonna run it again. Taking, you have to, that purple circle is purple for reason so that you can know that you're, you know, you've filtered and if you're not getting a result that makes sense to you, you can always remove a filter. Let's now go to the reference library. And okay, so Sleepwalk shows up in 10 references. But let's have, pop back over to repertories for a minute. Do you see this word here, somnambulism? That's the word that uh, put up here with sleepwalk. It, it shows up, it's both words in the complete, but I have a feeling that it might be the only word in some books. And you can get that drop down and use that if you want. Um, so here it is. Okay, so I found the word on the drop. Didn't have to type the whole thing. Now I'm going to run this search. And you can see how much bigger the result is. Um, I've got many more than four repertories here because it's good to think in those old, old words, you know, that are in the repertories from the 1800s and try to come up with that term as well as maybe a more modern term that client has used, where you get a much better result. And let's hop over to reference library tab, and you can see the result is much bigger here as well. Any questions? I recommend using um, a thesaurus, but, you know, even this, even a standard thesaurus may not pick up some of this old terminology. It might, but um, we have a icon over here that, that gives some synonyms sometimes, but it's it needs um, a little bit of fleshing out. It doesn't always give a synonym. So for instance, sleepwalk, I'm just gonna come over here and see. Curious to see if we get a result and we don't for that word. So again, I would go out to Google, use your thesaurus or open up your repertories. Like for instance, you could, again, um, when you get this result, you know, just be pay attention to what you see there that's also in the rubric and use some of that terminology. Um, Lucy, Lisa is asking um, if you could help her with a search. Okay. Can you help me look for despair with, about losing weight and desire to lose weight? She's asking if such a rubric exists. Okay, let's take a look. So despair to lose weight and desire, despair about losing weight and desire to lose weight. Okay, I'm just going to put the one word in first, weight. Mm -hmm. Let's put that word in. And we come to the mind chapter. Delusions. Interesting. I'm um, trying to think of a word that is, I'm just going to go look at the reliable two. Hmm. Um, trying to think of a word. Maggie, if you can think of one, uh, jump in. Well, enlarged. Delusion ugly is it's not really very politically correct, I know, but we're working with old language. What was the word you said? Um delusion ugly is ugly or um I also put in a search there for fat. Yeah, um, fat there or, is um, delusions, imaginations, fat ugly should be or large mm -hmm. or enlarged. Enlarged and fat. Anxiety, we can put sad in there. Um, okay, so let's see what we get with all this. 
Oh, Lisa is saying the word, there is the word obese, which is. Okay, let's add the word obese to here. And run that. Let's look in the reference library. Sometimes, you know, the, the rubrics are all taken from a lot of material medicines, which aren't always published, I guess. Um, so we've got anxious obesity. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think in a big picture. Um, body image. Let me just put body in there. See what we come up with. It's going to be a big result. I think that's why it's taking a few seconds here. Just when you're doing your next search, uh, Naomi is asking, what is the number three for it? You know, when you use numbers there. And oh, yeah, I'll be happy to explain that. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to go for body image, anxiety in the body. Aversion to the, of course, these are small. Not separated from. Imagines um, body parts are large. That's not quite what you want because she might be she might really be overweight, mm -hmm. and she's just despairing that she can't lose that. Um, Ellen is suggesting um, corpulency, which actually mm -hmm. gives um, pot bellied and large pot bellied. I'm going to run that in a corpulent. I'm going to run that in a new. I'm hitting the plus sign so I can run that in a second tab. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to body for just a minute. So you know, she's unhappy with her body image. I might just run body image at, and try to hone in body slash image even, so I can get both. And I'm gonna run that in a new tab. Whoops, I didn't mean to put bod. I accidentally rose that. A minute. Let me put the Y back in there. Okay, now we'll run this. I guess I could have put body and image together, but I wasn't sure I would get a result with that. So just doing it this way. Dysmorphia is another word for okay. body or self-reproach with the body. Lots of good suggestions here. Yeah, uh, yeah, delusions. It's not a delusion, but you were despair. So I'm gonna scroll down here past delusions and just see lots of delusions about the body. That might be something to look at. Is Is there a delusion? Is she truly you know, seeing her body in a way. Wow, there are a lot of delusions. Let me get past them. Okay, here we go. Here's one I like. Mind, sadness, depression with body he heaviness. Does that seem to fit everybody? Or maybe not, maybe not, because that's not, 
that's a heaviness in your body. Not a, not a, yeah, that doesn't fit. That does not. Fit. I was hoping. I was really hoping. <laughs> um, Ellen is suggesting mind appearance focused on. Ah, okay. And there is that to consider. Um, that, it, you know, if you're again stepping back and looking at this despair over her body, maybe that is a hyper focus. And that's the pathology truly. Um, so you do have, that's a really good suggestion. More delusions, discontented, discontented with one's appearance. It's a rather small, um, but this would certainly apply, I think. It's a small rubric. Concerned about her appearance, I think that could apply. You know, the despair is also a type of concern, I think, right? Sadness. So I think this might be the way to go. Thank you for that suggestion, Ellen. Lisa, what do you think? Lisa, do those, does that help? Uh, Lisa is asking and some, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, Lisa is asking and somebody else asked also uh, that number three. Lisa says yes. the reference library, library find is useful. Where do we put the number three to mean within three words of? And I think also when you get that result, um, Lucy, maybe show it going to the clip, clipboard. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I found this unreliable and focused, focused on appearance. I, I really like that one. Let's go ahead and put that on the clipboard um, and we'll come over to reference library. And there's a lot, it's probably, it's such a, you know, the term could apply to a lot of different things. So I'm not sure I'd want to put these 2000 remedies on a clipboard, but let's, let's say appearance within three words. I use the three on my keyboard of um, focus, to focused. Okay, so we're gonna run this. And now you, you really did hone in on that um, idea in the repertories and I'm coming over to the references and oh, this is much 37 remedies and you've got those two words. And I asked the program to find every instance where those two words are within you know, three words of each other. And to put all this on a clipboard, uh, you would click on this little clipboard on the right side with a plus sign on it. Just click there and all 37 remedies go on that clipboard. And it, uh, whenever you do that in the material library side of global search, the rubric comes in looking like this, rl-s. So, reference library dash search mm -hmm. and you can see that this is the rubric that we picked up from reliable mm -hmm. repertory super yeah. lucy thank you we oh. have another um request for another search would be can you help to look for a thumb sucking rubric please thumb um, sucking thumb suck. I'm just going to put those, I'm going to put those two words in within three words of each other. Because if I were to just put thumb in, I'd get way too much. So we came up with uh, this result, this many repertories. Um, not great, not huge. Um, and it's interesting that they call the first finger the thumb. I've always found that a little bit odd. I always think of the fingers as the fingers and the thumb as the thumb, but in the repertories, you have to remember that what they, they often in the repertories, first finger is the thumb. So, um, so there are these, we can pop down to the reliable and see what that might be. Let's put extremities chapter there. There you go. And you could add the clipboard. So you can take, let's go ahead and add variety to the clipboard here. Um, that 
and we can look in FATOC, see what they have. That probably is covered by the reliable, I'm guessing. Cat Marin Silica. Uh, Lucy, I'm going to suggest how about taking a number of those and um, combining them? I'm going to, yeah. So I'm going to throw these. I'm going to go ahead and take that. Oh, yeah, actually, CalCos. Uh, let's see what's in the Suggesta. Okay, that. That gives you a zero remedy rubric. Um, but what you can do is double click to go to the repertory at that rubric, open up cross references and just see what uh, Massimo might recommend for this. I'll go ahead and do that real fast. I'm double clicking to take myself right here. And now I'm going to cross references to see Okay, and so this is how um, the Suggesta would look at that. So you can click on the cross-reference here and you can put that on the clipboard. Okay, so that, that was, I think, I love that the zero remedy rubrics are shown in global search because sometimes it, you know, it gives you a great way to pop over to the repertory module and pick up a, a very pertinent, uh, rubric. And so now I'm going to open the clipboard and I'll toggle away from the graph for a minute. And so here I'm going to grab this and I'm holding on the command or the control key to select multiples. Okay, so I've selected all those thumb sucking, finger sucking rub rubrics for Materia Medica searches. Um, and I'm going to make group which I clicked on that little icon that looks like folder. As a keyboard shortcut, you can also hit the plus sign on your keyboard and you get the very same window. And so it created that combined rubric and the the, the, the rubrics that are in that combined rubric are found indented underneath it. Um, and you can open up the graph again. On the graph side, you only see the name of the combined rubric. Was that, was that helpful, I hope? Yes, and maybe while you're there um, to show ungrouping or dragging and dropping a remedy into that group or mm -hmm. a rubric. Absolutely. So let's say that um, to ungroup, you would simply hover your mouse on the name of the combined rubric, right click and ungroup. Okay. Um, but let's put them back together I'm holding the command key. And I'm gonna hit the plus sign for this time. You can name it whatever you want, but fingers. And let's say you want this bottom rubric to come out of this. I can just select it and pull it out. Okay, now it's out of it. And it's a standalone rubric by itself. If I wanna put it back in, I'm gonna grab it and just drag it, drag it in. Now it's back in. So it's, it's just simple, you, whoops, it popped up to the top. I'm sorry, I went too far with it. There we go. So it's easy to bring the rubrics in and out of the combined rubric that you've created. Any other questions? Um, yes, uh, Lisa says, thank you for the search for weight to spare, which has been useful. So another question is, is there a way to put in does not feel valued and appreciated? Hmm, does not feel valued. Um, guys, jump in. Please put, uh, I'm having a little bit of a brain fog for the moment here. <laughs> what? Let me put appreciation in. Appreciation first.
desires appreciation. Here we go. Delusions that is not appreciated. Super. Okay. So, um, so I, I wonder, Lisa, if you're putting a lot of words up in global search, my recommendation is to pick a keyword, one keyword, maybe two, and then go from there. But start start small and see, and because then you can always look and hone, you know, hone it down further. If there are no other questions, I was going to review the right-click function, which I'm always talking about in one-on-one -on -one searches as well. It, okay. The Mac users have the hardest time with it. Windows people, they just know to click their, their right, the right side of their mouse and they're, they're good to go or the trackpad. I'm a Mac person and I didn't realize I could right-click until SHS came along with this feature. Um, on a Mac computer, you hold down the control key and you click, you can actually set it up to do it a couple of different ways, but I think that's the default way. Uh, it's important to know that. Uh, and I'm gonna review all the ways that you can utilize a right click in SHS. So I'm going to, you see how I have the two tabs here. I want a third repertory on the right side. Let's say I want as a Yaga's repertory, I'm gonna hover my mouse on the name of that repertory, open, I control clicked there. Now I'm gonna open that repertory in another window. So it's a good way to get uh, something on the left side to appear in a new tab on the right side. Now let's go into a repertory chapter. You can right click on the brick name and go view rubric info, you know, move it to a clipboard, copy it. Okay, so there's multiple things you can do when you hover your mouse on the rubric. Then if you come to a remedy, an actual remedy within the rubric, you can hover your mouse on that, right click, view remedy in the reference library, substance information, View the remedies family, I've been exploring a lot myself recently. I find it very interesting. Let's go look at Nux Vomica. And you can see it tells you, you know, which family it's in. And you can just scroll down. You can see what type of miasms. It falls under a lot of miasms. Um, Rajan put it in the typhoid miasm family. For Bentley, it was Sora, Psychosora. And so kind of fun. I, I find it fun to explore the family information. Massimo's groups, passages, passages dependency. Etc. Pain is related to compression. Interesting. So it's just, it's great. It's a great way to learn a little bit more. And of course, um, you can get the same information in the kingdom graph, but it, it just gives it, gives it in a very concise way here in this window. If a, a lot of people I know in partic from particular schools, especially, use Vega's boxes quite a bit, the Vega's um, repertory. And so you can see what the Vega categories are. Um, while you're on that display there, um, Eric is just asking, can you explain the difference between the fact that Nux Vom is in blue type, arsenicum is underlined? Mm -hmm. the it's the grade of the remedy. So for instance, I'm gonna throw this on a clipboard. You'll be able to see it better. Um, we're gonna put that on the board. There we go, it went on the clipboard. Um, and you can see, I'm gonna turn this on to a number graph, okay? That blue for Nux Vomica, it, um, it represented grade three. See, here's Nux Vomica. It represented a grade three. Um, the arsenicum that you saw that was underlined represented a grade one, two, excuse me, a grade two. And the other ones that are just, um, 
small small type and not underlined or bolded or anything are grade one. Let's go back to that rubric again. See every um, every remedy in a rubric has a grade, and they're graded according to um, how how many provers had that symptom allergic rhinitis, um, a lot of provers had that symptom. So Nuxlamica has a grade of three. Arsenicum, not as many as Nuxlamica, but a good number. So, you know, it's got a grade of two. These other ones, the symptom occurred, but as not, not, as, not as a rate of frequency as for Arsenicum or Nux, Nuxlamica. So hopefully that's clear. And um, Yolanda is saying, um, hello there. What about an aspect next to the remedy? Yes, some of them do have, let's go back to the reliable repertory. The complete and the reliable both have aster asterisks. Let's go into the head chapter. Or, okay, so not very many of those do. Let's go to the line chapter. And you can see the asterisks here. Every remedy that has an asterisk, it means it has a reference string. So I'm going to go ahead and under abandon here, I'm gonna right click on Belladonna, go to that reference string. And you know then that Belladonna uh, came to be in that rubric abandon, wildness uh, by herring. And in the reliable, you also get context. She talks like a maniac with staring, protruded eyes, loud laughter, wild abandon. Now you get the author when you go into complete repertory, but the context um, you don't get. So let's go into complete mind. And do they have abandon here? Let's see if I can find that very same rubric. Hmm. or wild, let's go to wild, just trying to find a similar. And so here we have wildness, um, Belladonna, I'm just gonna right click. I couldn't find abandon. So it's not, the repertories aren't identical. You're gonna have different rubrics, depending on which repertory you're in. And so in the complete, you see that this remedy was put in the rubric wildness. Here's herring. That's the same one we found, um, but all the, also these other authors. Um, so this gives you the author, but it doesn't give you that context, that little bit of um, description Reliable does. And again, those weren't exactly identical um, rubrics. So. I could go to the reliable and look for wildness and just see here. Mind, wait, I'm gonna go to the reliable. Mind. Okay, here we have wildness here. Um, Belladonna doesn't have the asterisk here. But... Okay, so again, the reliable, um, you know, it's a somewhat new book. Uh, and I think they're adding asterisks all the time. So it's a work in progress as well. Um, going back to the right click on the Mac, um, D is saying that on the newer Macs, you can also use two fingers in the bottom right of the trackpad to right click. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. And I think Rupali does that. Rupali has set her computer to do the, the, the double to tap. Um, it all it all takes place over here in system preferences, you know. So whatever you have available, you can just come over here to trackpad or mouse, you know, and it'll let you set it up however you want. My computer's somewhat old, so I'm not sure I have the options that a newer computer would. Any other questions? No. No. All right, let me just show right click on the clipboard again. I just, again, I'm reiterating the right click because it is so important. When you're in the clipboard, looking at your graph, you can hover on any one of these remedies. Let's say we wanna go, go research palladium a little bit. 
and I want to go view this in the reference library. I'm going to select this top. I, I right clicked to get the menu and I'm going to choose that top choice. Okay, let me X out of here and try one more time. Sometimes you have to do it twice. And it took me to Palladium. Clark's came up first because Clark's is the first book under this remedy. I can close Clark look at all my other books that are that have information about this remedy and you know go to a let's say I want to look at herrings h-e-r I'm going to type and there it is I just click it now I'm going to at that remedy um, you can also right click over here on this clipboard um, navigator this uh, last icon right above the clipboard you can right click there let me just click on that when you regular click on it it opens another clipboard when you right click on it you get these options to delete clipboards i'm going to go ahead and delete that second one that i opened yes i do want to delete it and you can also double click on this icon to do the very same thing so that's that's actually you have two choices there you can read the choices when you hover your mouse on the icon. Click to add a new clipboard or double click to show the options. So you can also double click or right click. Um, am I forgetting any right click options? Um, oh yes, so let's go back to the reference library. If you highlight some text and right click, you have an option to copy it or get a translation. I think I've covered all the right clicks. Have 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 I, Maggie? Can you think of another one? No, I think that's that's good. We just have um two more questions okay. here. Okay, let's take two more questions. Um, Yolanda is saying, can I ask if there are no four points in remedies, as in Murphy's repertory? I'm not really sure I understand you the mean question. Grades? Mm, yeah. Let's go to Murphy's. And we'll open up something in the mind chapter. And I'm just going to throw, are you saying that there are only three, three grades, Yolanda? I'm just going to throw something on the clipboard so I can kind of look at it. So here we have it. Um, I'm not seeing any fours. Of course, I'm not seeing fours for any of it. That's because we have pretty small, pretty small rubrics on this clipboard. You would see a four if you pick up something huge, like put fear from the complete. Here we go, 900 some odd remedies in that rubric. You're definitely gonna see some fours. There's a four, yep. yep. So it just depends on the repertory that you're looking in. Some grade all the way up to four and some don't. Does that answer your question, Yolanda? Yes, thank you. Okay, okay good. And you said there was one more question, Maggie. Lucy showed us that the underlined remedy equals grade two and the blue remedy equals grade three. Grade four is bold. How are these remedies represented on SHS? So I, I went back to Lisa to say, did she mean the graph or the clipboard or, or elsewhere? Because I wasn't sure. Right. I mean, they're represented on the graph as we see it right here. They are represented. Let's go back to the complete and open up the mind again. Um, let's go back to fear, that big rubric. 
And you can see that um, the four is, is that slightly purple, all caps underlined. And the three is the blue, right? Mm -hmm. And the um, underlined small, lowercase slack type is two. And the lowercase no underlined black type is one. Did that answer your question, Lisa? I hope so. And then Phil is saying, can you explain how to interpret the various colors and numbers on the graph in order to choose a remedy? Well, um, these colors here on the kingdom line represent the kingdom. And so the blue, uh, you can hover your mouse on a color square and you can see on the status bar, blue is minerals, green is plants. Let's go see what yellow is. Yellow is bacteria, red is animals, and so on and so forth. Um, the, the remedies come into the graph uh, by default, by, by the ones that are in the most rubrics that you have selected. So that's how you're looking at, that's how you're looking at things here. And graph tells you is that arsenicum is, um, has a total of eight, meaning the grades in the rubrics that arsenicum is found in, total eight, five, six, seven, eight, you see. And it's in four of these six rubrics that we have here. And so that's why you would want to consider arsenicum, um, you know, along with some of these others at the top. And, you know, you can, if, if you're thinking, you know, sometimes you can come in and go look at the small remedies because they do tend to get sort of overlooked sometimes. So you can come in and look at things from a small remedy perspective. Um, but you know you want to be careful selecting one of these because they may not cover every aspect of your. Yes, Erica. Oh, and okay. Well, Lucy, you dropped out again. Oh, when did you, I drop you, out? You were just saying to us that we need to be careful selecting the small. Oh yeah, just you need to be careful selecting the small um, remedies because they may not cover every aspect of your case. You know, you just have to be careful. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna have to call my internet provider. This is the second week in a row, third week maybe, third month, I should say. Um, any other questions? We're about out of time, but I'm happy to take another one if somebody- That's it, to. thank you. Okay, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope we'll see you at the next training, which is in two weeks. It's the Intermediate, intermediate Advanced Training with Rupali. Thanks so much, bye-bye. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.